Yeah, we're going to be uh, talking about the Chad Daybell trial uh, a bit today. More chilling testimony that's continuing to come out. Uh, jurors in the uh, Chad Daybell trial presented with unsettling details and the evidence linking uh, the disappearance of Tyler Ryan to the property of the accused. FBI Special Agent Steve Daniels, who uh, supervises the uh, evidence response team, provided a gripping account of the day. Investigators unearthed the remains of a teenager in a fire pit behind no. Daybell's home. Yeah, and let's take a listen to uh, to some of that testimony. Agent, can you describe uh, what the jury is seeing in one seven or, or in this photo? As the backhoe is expanding northward from the pet cemetery, this is one of two vertebrae that were identified, and at this time. We weren't able to determine if this was a human vertebrae. Um, but the key thing was at this point, we stopped and we tried, we had a forensic or we had an anthropologist with us on scene and we tried to make a determination if this was human or not. And while that determination was a, being attempted, uh, we, I caught an odor of human remains decomposing. And so that leads us to stop utilizing the tractor and we start processing this area uh, by hand. That would be horrible to have just regular knowledge of human remains decomposing scent on you where it's like, oh, it's human remains decomposing. And you have to spell it so frequently in a job like that. That ugh. Ugh. Well, you know, I was I was out biking yesterday and we drove <laughs> drove uh, rode by a house. Where the hell is this going? Well, no, I, I, was actually, out, I was out I know, biking right? yesterday. <laughs> well, honestly, and as I was riding by a house, I smelled something that caught my attention and I went, something is decomposing. And the reason I know that is from my time in the veterinary field. Sometimes people would bring in a pet that had been deceased for a day or two. Maybe they didn't want to let go and they they left the dog or cat in like the garage and it was decomposing and it just has a not a tangy smell but there's something ju that just triggers it in your brain to say this is not normal this isn't like lemon or lavender this is something that you need to pay attention to because it's not normal yeah and when i rode by this house i smelled that yesterday and i went whoa and i actually circled back around because I'm like, you I know this smell. Another whiff? I mean, well, it could be a decomposing animal. I mean, that would be probably the most likely in the area, wouldn't it? I hope so. And if it's not, we've got another story to cover. <laughs> oh, when Bike by it again tomorrow. See if it's still out there. And, uh, yeah. yeah, you know, and then start snooping around the yard, uh, and, you know, and then, but never like look behind you and suddenly, oh my gosh, what are you doing here? It'll be, it'll be yeah. like a, a horror movie of some sort. But I'm telling you, I, I understand it. You know, some people who maybe haven't been around something of that nature, they may not quite understand, but once you've smelled it and you know, you, I, identify what that smell yeah. is you will never forget it and you know it every single time you smell it yeah i can't uh, the the closest i came to it was when i had uh pigs uh when i was playing farmer for a f few years there or forced into it and uh then when they died um that was the worst smell i've ever smelled in my life yeah it is bad and they were ginormous and I had to bury them somewhere. And the only way I could move them was by like strapping them with, um, you know, like vehicle straps and things. Um, and then taking a four wheeler and dragging them out of uh, their pen and then to a place to bury them. Yep. These are all the things Ew. I've done in my life. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, well, you have a very colorful life, so uh, we appreciate hearing some of. It. I, uh, I I don't ever want to do that again, uh, or or do the farm thing again. Did it? Tried it? I enjoy the city life much better. Uh, there's been more uh, interesting pieces uh, of the uh, Chad Daybell trial you've probably heard about in the last week. Uh, specifically, uh, I, I want to talk about 
Judge Boyce because he had to snap at John Pryor a few times. And John Pryor thus far has been like nails on a chalkboard to most people. How would you describe John Pryor to you? Who, who, like, what is he? Does he annoy you? Does, is he just pleasant and just yes. sounds like kind of an old oof or what? He he sounds like like somebody that you have to hang out with, but is so annoying, and you just ah like every time he talks, you just want to punch him. That's, yes, that's the feeling I get when I hear him. Yeah, I uh, I agree. It, it it it's it almost feels condescending. Uh, yes, very kind. Like like I know the answer to this, but I'm just going to ask it like I don't know, and I'm just going to keep doing this kind of it, it it's it's pandering it's it's not appealing at all it doesn't feel genuine it just feels like an asshole that that thinks they know everything and and they're going to just kind of do their thing without regard to reality which i mean that's kind of what he has to do he's representing chad daybell uh but i i mean i don't yeah. know I, I don't know how anyone could really do it i don't know just his his demeanor is what i don't like and it's no fault of his own he, other than it's just how he carries himself. But I just, I don't, yeah. Doesn't he remind you back in school when you were put into a group and you had to do a group po- project and there's always this one person that just drove you up a f- freaking wall, but yes. you had to, you had to be part of the group. You had to do the project. You had to listen to what the ding dong said, but that's exactly who he is. You have to listen to him. But again, you want to punch him in the face every yeah, time. Yeah, he just doesn't come across. It's like he should have, um, you know, he, he should have had more training in uh, <laughs> how to uh, deliver by this point in life. But anyway, here is uh, Judge Boyce telling John Pryor to basically shut the F up. One of the reasons we showed you those photos we took was just to show you that it was fairly easy to walk to. Uh, when as we walk towards that burial, that raised berm, it was pretty easy to distinguish where that right. burial site was. And I appreciate and that. Also. It was hidden, though. Judge, I'm going to object. Pryor, when, I'm going to object to you talking over the top of his response, Mr. Pryor. Let him finish his answer. Before and judge, it's non-responsive. Mr. Pryor, you just ran over me. Stop cutting people off in your cross, please, including me. Let the witness finish and. We'll never get an accurate record if you keep doing that. So please do that. And judge, my objection is non-responsive. I asked him about the the electronic data. Data. I didn't ask him about the rest of this colloquy. Ask, Your Honor, he ask another question, Mr. Pryor. You engaged in the use of electronic data to locate the remains of uh, J.J. Vallow on the twenty third. Is that right? Uh, that was just one of the things we used. The okay. telephone ping uh, information showing that uh, there was a telephone ping in that northeast area by the pond. Okay. was just one reason or indicator to show us to go look in that area. Okay, thank you. Yeah, wow. That was, yeah, that- uh, yeah. kind of the know-it-all. I, judge, it was this, like, like it, 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 and just oblivious to the fact that of what he was doing. It, it just, yeah. I don't know. Well, it's never a good thing when the judge basically scolds you as an attorney it's one thing if they're scolding somebody who's sitting on the the stand Mm -hmm. you know and their demeanor is not right but an attorney this is you're trained you are are trained to understand how this process works and how to respect the people that are giving their testimony and he's not being very respectful no no he knows better he does yeah it's just one more kind of ick ick factor on him i just bad attorney just a really yeah uh, Lori Vallow, we saw some new video this week as well that we had not seen in the past of an encounter with the police at her brother's home. Uh, this is just an interesting one to listen to if you've been following this case uh, to hear anything new that we haven't already heard. It's, it's kind of a rarity because a lot of it has come out uh, in Lori's trial. But here's a, a new piece to check out. We had two detectives over here trying to looking for you uh, a little while ago. Oh, because I was at the store. And they ran into well, probably one of your brother's. My brother and his friend, probably. He's been moving. Chad? Chad from Mm Rapid? What's his last name? Yeah, okay. All right. uh, It's just a mess that is constantly causing me trouble. Chad, the the D A Y B E L O? He's an author. Doesn't he live like out in the. He's not the Chad Bell, though. 
Uh, yeah, his wife passed away recently. Oh, the fuck? <laughs> Is that him? I, I don't know. But it is. Check it. D A Y B E. You know, it sounds familiar as an author. Okay, I, know. I think I know one of these. He's got a couple of daughters. Uh, he has lots of kids. Okay. I'm going to say. All right. What? Well, you need anything else? Sorry to bother you. Thank you. We well, don't mean to be a I'm problem. I'm sorry that people are constantly knocking on the door. They are looking for me, and I just don't want to be found. So. Have you had problems? Because I think we only had. My bro- well, the reason I'm moving is because the brother that was going to kill me that was on emails and texts with my, hus- my husband at the time came showing up here, so he found out where I was and he was knocking on my door. No, this was your brother? One of my brothers. He showed up here and was knocking on your door. He lives in Kansas. And you said something about you were getting threatening emails? Well, th- no. Just after my husband passed, I found emails and text between them that they were planning all this stuff to get rid of me. Do we need to worry about him coming over? Well, that's when I'm moving back. I'm well, moving, and I'm not going to be in a place. I'm going to live with my friend, Melanie. Don't tell anybody her name, Gib, because I don't want anything in my name. I put the apartment in my name, but I've been staying over here with my brother because he protects me. Okay. He's very protective of me. So. He shows back up. You know, you can call. Take care of it. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I just, like, it's just a nightmare. I mean, I canceled the insurance policy since my husband passed, so there's no money. But thank you. <laughs> and what are they going to do with JJ and Patty? Like, what do people leave? Yeah. So, well, <laughs> if you have a problem, show back up, feel free to call us. We'll <laughs> come in front of Bob or something. Okay. All right. Sure. Okay. Good night, you're here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> See ya. That uh, evil bitch sure knew how to manipulate people. You know, she sounded so convincing and so matter of fact, and yet she knew exactly what had happened. Well, and also playing damsel in distress as well to these two dolts that were like, oh, pretty lady. Uh, If you need anything, you know, call the call the office. Here's my cell phone. Here's a beeper I had in 1989. I'll turn it back on for you just so. And my wife doesn't even know I have it. If any time you want to just talk, chat, uh, look at the stars at night, you know, uh, just uh, you give me a, a beep, you beep it, you know, and then I, I t- we'll show up maybe at the the old Holiday Inn down on South Seventy uh, Fourth. Yeah, I got a I got a standing room there. <laughs> God, what a debacle! You know. Yeah. Uh, it was a failure to confirm anything because the pretty lady sounded legit and, um, yes. no, and nobody wanted to look into it. I is wonder- that how you, you can get by in this world with some of these things is if yeah. you have, you know, a, yep. a nice rack and blonde hair, is that how things work? I think it's I, I'm worked just like asking that. for a friend. I think it's worked like that for quite some time. I, I mean, and I'm not endorsing it or anything. I'm just saying that's we, we've seen that happen. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, if she looked like, I don't know, just not that uh, the opposite of that, if, if she was like 400 pounds, uh, still had the same demeanor and everything, but didn't look the way she looked. Um, I don't think that she would have been getting the same uh, uh, treatment, if you will. Yeah, I guess. Unreal. But, yeah. No, I think that, that that played a huge part in her evading anybody looking into her for so long. Because once they started looking into it, then it was like, oh, shit. But it was like, well, we didn't know. We didn't know. Yeah, yeah you could have. That's yeah, the thing. I think you did know. You could have. You just didn't want to know. You just didn't want to know. And you didn't want to. Yeah. It's uh, it was a failure in human beings uh, there. I don't think nefarious, but a failure in human beings behavior uh very interesting stuff today thank you for gathering all that up stacy that was uh yeah there, there's so many weird things that are coming out especially in this trial and we're getting new audio and and seeing like that a, a insight fly in the wall into what one of those interactions was like that was uh that was fascinating uh all right we got uh, more we got uh some checking in with uh karen reed that is coming up 
on the next segment of Murder in the Morning Stamp. Want to listen ad free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.